got a feeling everything is going to be all right. It's prayer time as we go before him. Eternal and wonderful God, we come to thee knowing that you're the only true and the living God. There's no idol. There's nothing higher than thee. You're the alpha in our life and the beginning and the end. Everything, Lord. You have blessed us going and coming, and we thank you for that. You see our great needs, Lord, and one by one and name by name, you know them. You know what we stand in need of. We need comfort. We need peace. We need long-suffering, and we need patience. Lord, even in this pandemic, Lord, you know what we stand in need of, our family's health and strength. We ask that you would bless those that have lost loved ones, and Lord, do something very special for them surround them with your love we ask now Lord that you would do something special for our pastor this evening give him a word make it Lord so great and so wonderful that we would then receive it and do it Lord we ask that you would do something special for those that are gathered even in the audience Lord one by one and name by name surround them with your love we thank you for all that you do for us eyes have not seen nor ears heard Neither has it entered into the heart of men what you have in store for us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this evening, 1 John 16 through 19. Hereby we perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's goods, seeth his brother have need, and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him, from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us love in word, and neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby, we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the word of God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we want you to know that we love you tonight. That we adore you, God. We stand before you with praise on our lips. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you just open your mouth and begin to love on him just for a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. You know he's been good. You know he's been good. You know he's been good. Hallelujah. Oh God, we magnify you and we glorify you tonight. Hallelujah. Say it with me. 
me one more time. Say, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, I do. From the bottom of my heart, from the depths of my soul, Jesus. Yes, I love you, Lord. Oh! 
Come on, lift your hands. And in spite of what your day been like, your week been like, lift your hands high. And everybody say, bless the Lord. Oh my, oh my soul. Why do we praise him? Why do we praise him? He has done. That's why I praise him every day. He has done. And many of you are familiar with it because you've heard me repeat it. Bishop Johnson asserted that, <laughs> that we really haven't had church until we break a good sweat. <laughs> that was his philosophy. If you haven't broke a good sweat, we haven't had church. He was of the mindset that when we worship God, we should put ourselves into the service. So the Lord bless you tonight. We're grateful to the Lord. Thankful for this privilege uh, to have these few moments to spend with you in, in gleaning the pages of the word of the Lord. Um, and I'm honored to stand here tonight to be able to teach and share. We're going to go into the word of the Lord tonight. And... Um, Mining, mining a, uh, an area of prayer. We're so grateful again for the teachings of our guest teacher on last Tuesday night and Wednesday night, the Honorable Bishop uh, J. Moore of Juliet, Illinois, our former presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith International. And... Uh, He shared with us riding on this topic of prayer and I'm just mining the scripture to share with you uh, the importance of prayer. And uh, I'm just going to stay here for a little while longer. In our last class two weeks ago we were talking to you uh, from the perspective of being diligent or praying all the time. We read to you from Ephesians 6 and 18. If you will allow me, I'll start there again. I'm not going to be long tonight. Just going to move along in God's word just with hopefully precision and brevity. Ephesians 6, 18, we'll, we'll read it. Ephesians 6 and 18. It says in Ephesians 6, verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit 
watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We went there in the previous week because we wanted to underscore with you how important it was, how important it was to, to pray, praise God, um, with a mindset of consistency and diligence and to do so all the time. It's not a secret uh, because we read it in our previous Bible study. The, I think the term I want to use is panoply. That's the theological term for all of the militaristic uh, uh, attire that Paul mentions in the previous verses. He, he dresses us up and... Uh, talks about uh, us taking unto ourselves the whole armor of God. And why was that necessary? It's because the battle was a spiritual battle. Now listen to me real close. Um, it was a spiritual battle. Paul said, as he wrote to the church at Corinth, that the weapons of our warfare, he said, they are not what carnal, but instead they are mighty through God. To what? To the pulling down of strongholds. I'm not going to dwell there, but um, he's letting us know that um, in order to withstand or be able to stand, uh, <laughs> In the evil day, that's what he calls it, evil day being a day of, of danger. And uh, I don't have to tell you, these are evil days, days that are fraught with danger. Um, he told us that there's a attire with which we must dress in the spirit. And then he runs through all of those things in the verses that are above Ephesians 6. And 18, he runs through all of those things. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shot, verse 15, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit. Sword of the spirit being what? The word of God. David said, thy word, I did what I hid it in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And then verse 18. Hmm. Praying when? Always. At all times. And I'm pulling right now and I'm expanding a bit, pulling from another translation. Praying at all times, on every occasion, in every season. And uh, you don't have to switch control room to scriptures I'm pulling from the Amplified Bible, Amplifying verse 18, if I can play on words. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season. Uh, um, um, prayer is in season. <laughs> used to sing a song. Just listen to me tonight. When I was coming up, we, old saints used to sing a song, and the song went on this wise, and you all forgive me, I'm I was raised in the old time church. And they used to say, stop now, it's praying time. Yeah, stop now, it's praying time. Stop now, it's praying time. <laughs> and then at the end of that song, they said, for the sun is almost down. Paul said in the last days, what, what's going to happen? Perilous times shall come. And verse 13 of this Ephesians 6, it said, you, you need to put the armor of God and not partial, but all of it, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day or the dangerous day. 
God help me to stand. <laughs> and then he, he says this to us, having done all to stand, <laughs> when you've done everything that's possible to stand, I, I want you to keep on standing. Having done all, I want you to keep standing firmly in your place. Listen to me. You know, that honor, that armor is, is, as the preachers of old have reminded us, it covers every part of us but our back. Think about that. Not wrestling against flesh and blood. There's something more diabolical that's going on than flesh and blood. You know, and I'm going to say this for me tonight, if, if I only had to deal with flesh and blood, I'd be all right. And if you're thinking that the only thing you're dealing with, I thought somebody said, well, I thought you were going to talk about prayer tonight. I am. Stay tuned. If you're naive enough, and I mean that with no insult, if, if your thinking is naive enough to think that, that my conflict is with flesh and blood or with others, you are woefully deceived. That's what Satan wants us to think. Part of, part of effective warfare is deception. I was watching, I don't know, lately I've been fascinated uh, sometime in the evening when I retire to give my mind a break. I've been fascinated with studying, uh, watching old war, World War II uh, movies Maybe that's what the pandemic has done. It's brought me to a point of desperation. <laughs> now watch old World War II movies, and and I've been studying quite a bit. Um, obviously, Adolf Hitler and his war strategies, and those that fought against him, and and I was watching either last night or the previous night. Uh, a lot of times, it watches me. <laughs> You'll figure that out later. <laughs> but but one thing it said. In their stratagem of warfare, the Allies and even Hitler sometimes, they would do things to deceive the other side. They would want the other side to think that they were moving their armaments one place so that they would focus their opening up a weakness in another space so they could swoop in and and achieve a mighty victory. And it occurred to me that that's how Satan fights. He doesn't want us to know who the real enemy is. And so we get caught up in all of this conflictive living, battling one another, angry with one another. When the real enemy cannot be seen with the naked eye. We're not just contending with physical opponents, but again, the Amplified Bible tells us against the despotisms, against the powers, hits, I like its word, against the master spirits, controlling spirits who who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the, the spirit forces of wickedness in, in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Oh man, it just, can I just say something to you? It just hit my spirit, and I believe the Holy Spirit is telling me to say it. Satan is an instigator. instigates what really what looks to us as natural conflict 
so that we don't come on the right battlefield and on the right plane. <laughs> you, you can't fight Satan in the flesh, nor can you defeat him in the flesh. It has to be done in the sphere of the spirit. And so Paul reminds us of that, and then he dresses us up, and he gives us nothing uh, the, the, the metaphor he uses gives us nothing on our back portion of our person. Why? Because he said, having done all to stand, I want you to stand firmly. In other words, I, I don't want you to retreat. Then after he goes through that list, back to the, the, the verse I want, verse 18. After you put on the whole armor and put on every protective device, take up the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He says, now I want to remind you so that your weaponry will work. Because I want everybody to Put this in the comment line right now. And I want you to tell each other, nothing will work without prayer. It won't work. It will not work without prayer. And so when the church is called to be alert in prayer, praying when? Always. And, and, and I, I love how superfluous the scripture is. Uh, the King James text, uh, uh, the, its wording is superfluous, praying always with all prayer. Isn't God amazing? He's emphasizing us how much I want you to pray. When you want me to pray, I want you to pray always with all prayer. Let's look at the Amplified Translation, which they may put on the screen this time. And I want you to consider its words tonight. I want you to pray at all times. Thank you, Jesus. On every occasion, in every season. And, and, and the Bible says, when you pray, I want you to pray in the spirit. And so the, if you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost should influence your prayer. Uh-oh, we may get in trouble. When you got the Holy Ghost, you don't pray for some people and against other people. We don't pray in precatory prayers in the New Testament when we have the Holy Spirit. You could pray that in the Old Testament and tell God to get people. We don't pray get them prayers in the New Testament. You can't pray against me and intercede for me. And you ought to there's another passage of scripture. I won't go here right now, but Paul said, you go read it in Timothy, uh, prayers are to be offered up for all men. Let me ask you a question and get in trouble. Who are you not praying for? I'm digging a hole for myself. Who are you mad at right now that you're so angry with uh, you're not praying for them? I thought Joe prayed for his friends. For his enemies, rather. I thought he prayed for his enemies. You got to pray for the people you don't like. And, and when you pray, you don't ask God to kill them. Oh, I got to stay here for a minute. Put, the, put that amplified scripture back, back up here for a moment. Pray when? I want you to pray at... At, at, at all times, on every occasion, in every season. And then I want you to do it in the spirit. And I'm going to be redundant and say it again. I want you to pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season. Good God from Zion. That's what, that's what praying at all times means. 
All times means all times. <laughs> there should be no situation that puts your prayer life on hold. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer. And we told you we're going to get there, different kinds of prayer. With all manner of prayer and entreaty. Let's flip back to the King James text. Then I'm going to come back to the Amplified uh, Version again. Let's go back to the King James translation. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and what? Supplication for all saints. I just feel like the Holy Spirit told me to slow down for a minute and stay right here. Thank you, Jesus. want that to marinate in your spirit, please. And everything I'm saying tonight, I'm saying in love. I hope I'm saying it in love and with the grace and gravitas of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Watching, keep that scripture up there for a moment, control room. I, wa I want them to see the word more than they see me tonight. You can get me in a second. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now flip that to the Amplified Translation. God help us tonight. I want you to look at that Amplified verse one more time. How y'all liking me tonight? I want you to come right to the middle of the verse. New King James says, said, watching thereunto. Amplified text says, to that end. To what end? To the end of praying at all times, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance. Catch this, interceding in behalf of all the saints who are God's consecrated people. Now, I'm going to ask a strange question tonight. And this is going to get to some of you. Who in the church are you not praying for? And I'm going to make it bigger than that. Who in the world are you not praying for? And then I want to ask you a question. And why are you not praying for them? If I'm making sense, I need 20 people to tell me real quick in the comment line, you're making sense, Bishop. Real quick. Who has your spirit so angry? I believe the Holy Ghost is using me. Whether it be valid or invalid, that you're not praying for them. Let me ask you the question another way and get in more trouble tonight. In the church, <laughs> and let me, let me have this illustration, stretch, uh, allow me a little silliness to make a point, and then I'll come back and make a point over that. Should the Hatfields pray for the McCoys? And should the McCoys pray for the Hatfields? Now, some of you might be too young to catch that. And I heard you before you start hurling it at me. Well, Bishop, there shouldn't be no Hatfields and McCoys in the church. You are absolutely right. But because we wrestled not against flesh and blood. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because we wrestled not against flesh and blood, Satan will attempt through his foul spirit 
to create a division and fissure in the church where there are Hatfields and McCoys. And let me tell you something, the only way we can heal that breach is that the Hatfields pray for the McCoys and the McCoys pray for the Hatfield. I know you don't like that. You can't stay mad with somebody you're praying for. If you're not right, I should pray for you. If you're wrong, I should pray for you. We quote the scripture, but we don't believe the scripture. When there is disunion in the body, we pray for union. When there is brokenness, we pray for wholeness. When there is sickness, be it physical or spiritual, the church is supposed to pray for healing. When there is confusion, turmoil, and chaos, we are to pray for peace. When there is sin, we are to pray for deliverance from sin in the church. We wouldn't have as many problems if saints were in, interceding for other saints. If we were not spending as much time talking about one another. I wish I was teaching right tonight. Somebody please tell me I'm teaching right. I hope I'm not making no enemies. I'm trying to help somebody. We do everything but pray. common English Bible. Offer prayers and petitions, verse 18, in the spirit all the time. Stay alert by hanging in there. <laughs> That's what perseverance is. Perseverance is hanging in there. Bishop, I've been praying for them a long time and, and they, that, that, I almost said the wrong word. Let me see that thing, but I almost, and y'all gonna get me. Some of y'all use uh, some kind of word with it that start with an N. I don't know what, what that is, but some kind of word start with an N. That thing, but I'm gonna say that, that thing ain't no better, better now, and I've been praying. Hang in there. Stay consistent with, with your prayer. And you, you can't have respect a person with your prayer. That, that common English Bible says it's the same thing. Every translation. Let me start at the beginning. Offer prayers and petitions in the spirit all the time. Stay alert by hanging in there and praying for all the believers. Now I'm going to make you mad again. If, if we pray 10% as much as we talk, God would fix a whole lot of stuff. He'd root out what needs to be rooted out. He'd plant in what needs to be planted in. But as long as we open up our hearts and allow Satan to have us attempting to fight a spiritual battle on an earthly or fleshly plane, we will never achieve true victory. How many of y'all done went to sleep on me? <laughs> My God. Help me, help us, Holy Ghost. So it talks about being alert. I think I read with you last week. Let me move from there. We read from some other passages that underscored uh, the importance of being alert. Let me just read a few to you 
tonight. Um, you look in the Bible, the entire theme of watchfulness and prayer. Um, I'm reading you from a, a study commentary on Ephesians. It's one of the commentaries I'm using for this lesson. It says the entire theme of watchfulness and prayer goes back to Jesus' teaching where the disciples are to be vigilant in the light both of temptation and of Christ's return. I want you to open your mind, stay with me. I think we read, with, uh, last week we read from uh, Matthew uh, 14 and 38. Let's go back there uh, very quickly. Um, Mark rather, Mark, Mark 13, 14 and 38. We read this two weeks ago in your hearing Mark 14, 38, it, it says, um, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit uh, truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. We know the scenario. We talked about it with you last week. That's when Jesus was in Gethsemane's garden, took his disciples there, told them to watch with me. I want you to be alert as I pray. And you know what happened? They fell asleep. Jesus chided them for being asleep, but he took their being asleep. And, it, and, and the Lord is so wonderful. Even as he, he is facing Calvary, he's yet teaching life lessons. And he so selflessly shared with his disciples <laughs> facing the, the ultimate, ultimate crises on Calvary. He tells his disciples, watch ye and pray. Lest ye enter into temptation, the spirit truly is ready, but the flesh itself is weak. My God. You hear that? taking my time tonight because I want you thinking. <laughs> you know, look at, look at verse 37. Let's go back to verse 37. We just read those other two scriptures that, that told us to persevere. And this was, this night of, in which Christ was to be arrested was, was arguably the longest night of his life. His spirit was, was agonized. The, verse 34, it talks about the crises of Christ as, as he is confronted with making that ultimate sacrifice on Calvary. And the Bible, it, when it talks about him, he, he said, my soul is, a, is exceeding sorrowful unto death. I'm overwhelmed with grief. We talked about that. So much so uh, until the grief is almost, it, it almost kills me. And then he asked his disciples, tarry ye here and watch. In other words, I want you to stay awake. The Bible says we're a little farther. Stepped away from them. Let me just read verse 37 to put you in that mind. I'm talking about being alert with prayer. Verse 37, it says, And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? God help me to say what I need to say in these few minutes. Simon, sleepest thou? 
Couldest not thou watch with me one hour? It seems to me, help me Holy Ghost, it seems to me that Jesus was depending He was depending on Peter to stay awake. It's a prayer moment. And I've come to this garden because there's a crisis within the person of the God man. My humanity is, is in crisis. Don't let me go too deep with that. This most magnificent being who is both human and divine, who is fully God and fully man, the God-man, this being who came out of eternity and is emptied of divine prerogatives and housed in this body of flesh so it later could be said that he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. And so he confronts the weakness of flesh as it is presented in the crises of Calvary or the crises of the cross. And in order for, for him to overwhelm the weakness of his own humanity, because he's human and divine. He comes to this garden to pray. And he didn't take Peter. He didn't take these disciples there with him so they could go there and sleep. He said, I brought you here because I've got enemies all around. Enemies that that are being stirred up by, by the demonic forces of hell that want to prevent the crisis of Calvary to take place because, because they know if I get that victory on Calvary, I'll, I'll cap their influence. And if I was going to do it by myself, I would have came by myself but I brought you here with me so you could stay alert. And maybe they should have been praying too. Oh, I'm about to go somewhere. What do you do when other folk have crises? the way the Amplified Bible, stay with me tonight, I like the way the Amplified Bible <laughs> brings it out in verse 37, let's read it. The Amplified Bible says that he came back and found them sleeping, oh Lord, 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 the church is in crisis right now. And you pick whatever crisis you want to talk about. At this very moment, the church of Jesus Christ is in crises right now. Worldwide pandemic. Governmental confusion and turmoil all over the globe. God don't come back finding us asleep. You can create whatever other crises you want to create because all of us have, <laughs> we don't just, COVID-19 ain't the only pandemic we got. Pandemics of the spirit. And what do we do when these crises come? The Lord is depending on us to not be like <laughs> these Poor disciples 
who as of yet had not been imbued with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm depending on you in crises to stay alert. And as you stay alert to be prayerful, but he has to challenge Peter. And so the Amplified Bible, it reads the verse, it says that he came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? God, I wish I was teaching here tonight. I need some prayer. Are you asleep? Church of Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. I got to say what the Lord told me to say tonight. Are we asleep? What do we do when crises comes? And, <laughs> and let me tell you something. You can, I'm, I'm going to play with it another way. You can, you can be moving but still be asleep. Some folk are sleepwalking. Sleep and don't know you sleep. Doing everything but the right thing. That sleep represents a whole lot of stuff. In the crises, you need to be alert enough to pray. We don't want to pray. That's our problem. See, let me tell you something. This, oh, this is going to hurt your feelings. Let me tell you, the flesh doesn't want to pray. Jesus said the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let me tell you one of the reasons. I'm going to get in trouble tonight. You know, let me tell you one of the reasons the flesh won't let you pray. The flesh never wants to get out of the way so God can handle it. Thank you, Jesus. This flesh doesn't want to get out of the way. Oh, I want to finish this verse. Simon, are you asleep? Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. Put your name in there and ask yourself that. Lambert, are you asleep? Whatever your crisis is, oh, I'm, 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 I'm on, you, you, your mind got to be creative to flow with me tonight. Whatever your personal pandemic is, whatever your fiery issue is right now, what are you doing with it? Because the Lord said, I was depending on you, church. I was depending on you, church. That's why I brought you here to the garden. That's why I brought you here. <laughs> oh, God, I, I, I know my metaphor is not working tonight. And somebody giving up on me. I brought you to this crisis because I thought I could depend on you to yet stay awake. Huh? Everybody didn't get to go to Gethsemane. Lord, I wish I was making sense. I need five people to tell me in the comment line that you're making sense right now, Pastor. I feel like hollering right now and shouting hallelujah. Matter of fact, I'm getting mad in a good way. I'm getting mad at the devil. He didn't take everybody to the garden. I'm taking those. The garden represented the cusp of the crises. And I brought you to the crises because I thought that you were one of them <laughs> that I could trust. We just read in the other passage of scripture in Ephesians, he said perseverance. I thought for sure that I could trust you to persevere. I thought for sure I could trust you to keep watching. I thought for sure if I set the example for you that when you are confronted with opposition that you would stay awake, that you would be alert, that you would persevere in prayer.
I'm going to say it again. I want everybody to put it on the comment line. Let me make some more enemies tonight. I don't know, something happened to me when I hit the pulpit. I was feeling timid before I got out here, but the Holy Ghost didn't got a hold of me. What are you doing? Why won't you pray? I want everybody to put this on the comment line for me right quick so it'll sink in our system. Simple statement. Put it out there. It doesn't have to describe you. I want you to help me to get it in the atmosphere so it can be a rhetorical statement. We do everything but pray. Why? Because we don't trust God to handle his business. We talk about it. We think about it. But we do very little praying about it. And I didn't write the Bible. He said in Ephesians 6, 18, to pray at all times, in every season, in every situation, for everybody. Let me tell the church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> when, when we really start praying, you'll see God do some stuff. And you shouldn't try to take your prayer and influence God. You should take your prayer and ask for the will of God. How am I doing right now? Everything but pray. I don't like nobody on my job. All the coworkers are bad. When was the last time you prayed for your job? When was the last time you prayed for your coworkers? I don't like my neighbors. When was the last time you prayed for your neighbors? I don't like my family members. Some of y'all don't even pray for your family. My church ain't nothing but trouble. When was the last time you prayed for your church? I hear, I hear, oh God, I'm going to get in trouble. I hear us talking, but I can't hear us praying. Mm. Nobody's praying. Everybody's asleep. And I keep saying, you, you, you can be sleepwalking. Check yourself out. You might be moving, but you're not praying. They tell me some people get up, Deacon Chapman, they get up, put their clothes on, go outside, walk around, sleep. Jesus, help me tonight. Here's what I want you to look at in this verse 37. And I'm, I'm going to quit at 815. I tell you, I feel a teaching unction on me right now. Don't you, don't you hit that button and turn me on. I'm going to talk to you like the late Mother Maddie B. Poole. She would, get, she would start catching them with the word, and, and she would be on the radio, and she'd call them out. I hear Mother Pooh right now. What you doing over there with that woman? You know that ain't your wife. What you doing down at that, that pool, pool house, that, that bar, that drinking, that tavern? I can hear old Mother Pooh saying that. And then she would, she would rip them up one side. You've been out all weekend. You ain't been home. Girl, you done threw your little babies down. I hear her saying that. Late Mother Vandalist Maddie be pool in my ear. And she would be wearing... <laughs> that that sent a man out and, and then after she wore him out she said don't you touch that doll 
Don't y'all hit that button and turn me off right now. It's not Bishop Gates. I believe the Lord is talking to you right now. Catch this. Why would they sleep? Everybody, we're talking about alertness, but they were asleep. And it was, it was in the most pivotal moment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This was the most pivotal moment, Pastor Potter. Calvary was the most pivotal moment of, of Jesus' being in the earth. There could be no resurrection where there's no Calvary. No need to talk about Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, whatever you want to call it. There first had to be a, a Friday where Jesus died. And his flesh would never have surrendered to the cross except he prayed his way through that crisis. And he said, I'm taking my inner circle. Do you not know if the Lord has brought you as a part of a generation of men of great crises, Oh, y'all don't like this. Don't you know it's it's cause he, he he's saying to you, I ought to be able to trust you. I ought to be able to, to, to count on you to handle conflict the right way. <laughs> oh God, I don't want to get in trouble. Scripture flashed across my mind, but I don't want to get in trouble. I'll say these words because I don't want to be misinterpreted, but I'll just say these words, ye which are spiritual. And I'll leave that right there. We fall apart and we fall to pieces sometimes because we haven't been built up in the Lord like we ought to be built up. It's the crisis that, that shows how strong we are in God. And we just read in Ephesians, I didn't go back through that chapter, but up above uh, 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 that 18th verse, several verses up, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And that strength is represented in how we hold up and it's no, it's no coincidence that verse 18 right behind him in joining us to be strong in the Lord, it's no coincidence that in the 18th verse he challenges us to persevere in prayer. I say to the church of Jesus Christ, if we all Pray right now, God would fix some things. We can't operate in malevolence. We can't operate in hate. We can't operate, oh no, we can't operate in anger. And I told you the other week, we all get angry. I get angry. But the Bible said, be angry and what? Sin not. He said, anger resteth in what? The bosom of a fool. You can't let anger remain. And the quickest way to get past anger is prayer. Because prayer, when you pray in the spirit, it propels you into the presence of the Lord. And the presence... The presence of the Lord is always transformative. And the reason we're doing everything but praying talking to me and you is because some, 
Sometimes we're not in the place we ought to be in God. Put this verse up again, verse 37. Hmm. Hmm. Who had done made mad? Who done pushed the stop button? Who's praying me? off the live stream feed right now. Lord, make him shut up. I'm bold enough right now to tell you that, that the Lord is talking to you right now. And to me, not just you, me too. <laughs> I'm lingering here for a reason. I haven't read the rest of the verse for a reason. I guess I'm going to take three more minutes, if you'll allow me. Somebody tell me, take three more minutes. If you think I'm doing all right. I'm lingering. I stopped in the middle of the verse because I, I want something to poke at us. I want you to catch this. And that's why I read other translations. Sometimes we read that King James text so much. It, 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 it doesn't always uh, have the pungency it needs to have with us because we're so used to the words. We allow, we allow even the word to go to sleep in us. He came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Now let's read the rest of the verse. Have you not the strength to keep awake <laughs> and watch with me for one hour? God, give me the strength to pray. To stay alert. Make me alert. Make me so prayerful. Make me so alert that I under I can scope out Satan's devices. That I can understand that when I'm under demonic attack, and not just me, when we're under demonic attack. alert keep me awake and then just don't keep me alert and keep me awake wake up the church so that our prayers can become united together to attack those demonic spirits that come against us Verse 38, Amplified Bible. I, I didn't use my three minutes. I need somebody to tell me to talk for too long. They're gone. I'm waiting. I'm going to wait on the comment line. I'm teaching and, and uh, my staff didn't turn the air on tonight and I'm hot. They turned it on too late. They wasn't alert and awake. <laughs> I'm having fun with them. But this is so important to me. I, I'm going to teach in the heat. I'm holding. I need, I need, I need. I won't take two more minutes until I get 10 people not in this room. Tell me to teach 
teach. Tell me, teach a little longer. I need, I need just a few. Tell me, teach a little longer. Every time I decide I'm going to teach 45 minutes, something get in me. But I don't want to abuse my privilege. I need, I need, I can't, I, I got to see 10 people say teach. Just a few more. Thank you. Verse 38, get ready to go. Keep awake. Keep awake. It means to be alert. You can't be alert if you don't pray. Be alert with prayer. Be alert. Keep awake. Push past the lethargy of the flesh. Push past the distraction of life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Life is designed in many elements by the influences of the powers of darkness to distract us from our prayer assignment. Circumstances arise. Satan is the one back behind the circumstances that he brings up to distract us. I need you to listen to me because I love you. I'm, I'm fighting back tears at this moment. Think about it. How much do you talk versus how much do I pray? Keep singing trouble in my way. Got to cry sometime. Lay awake at night. I used to sing that song when I was coming up. But, 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 but I thought you said, but that's all right because Jesus will fix it. We don't, we, Jesus can't fix what he's, no, I don't, let me say it another way. Jesus will not fix what he's not invited in to fix. We don't invite him in. We, we talk. And we fight and we get angry and we, and we live in our emotion, but we don't invite Jesus in. Saints of God, I, I, I still believe prayer works. Go beyond healing my body and getting some money. I'm so sick of that. And, 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 and I, and I want to be healed. Lord, don't let corona, corona uh, whatever you think, don't let it get me. I don't want COVID-19. Pray for my, my body to be healed. And re right now, you know, I, I believe if, if I leave out of here, I believe I'm going to heaven. And it don't matter what you think. Because <laughs> it really don't. My record's in heaven. My witness is on, is on high. I'm trying to make a point with what I'm saying. I believe if I left out of here, I'd go to heaven. Through the grace and mercy of God. I said it that way intentionally because that's the only way you're going to get there with your mean self. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to that, I'm talking to that person in the other part of the sanctuary. But I tell you what, even though I believe if I died right now, Jesus is going to take me in with him I really want to live because I want to fight the devil some more. And the church refuses to embrace the lesson that comes with crises. The church refuses to understand that when we are besieged and attacked on every side, that, that what it really is, is not a call for us to be lethargic, to, to wag our mouths. It's a call for the church to be alert. Oh, it's a call for the army to stand at attention and take formation and head down to the battlefield. We are soldiers in the army. 
And we got to fight, although we have to cry. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner and we must hold it up until we die. Keep awake and watch and pray constantly that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. Common English Bible says the spirit is eager. Need some singers, but the flesh is weak. But I don't know who I made man. If I made you mad tonight, I'm gonna tell you why. Because I love you. No, no, better yet, Jesus loves you. I believe anger is a legitimate emotion. One night I'll teach on anger. God gave us anger, righteous indignation. How is anger a legitimate emotion? Let me just go to the opposite first. It is illegitimate when we allow it to rest in us and control us. But anger is legitimate when we allow it to impel us into righteous action. If I knew the song, I don't even know the praise team, I'm not going to put you on the spot. This is not way back in the day, but what I think ain't back in the day, the older I get is back in the day. <laughs> I'm thinking it's still modern. You know the song, Lord, give me a praying spirit. Is that modern? Or that's, uh, you know, because I'm old and y'all don't know it, do you? do you? You know how to run with it? No, it's difficult. We'll learn it. But that's the song that's in my spirit. Lord, give me a, don't play it. Give me a praying spirit. Y'all know it? Praying spirit. That's all right. I threw that on them. But you know what I mean. Put it on the line, if you will, because that's how I want to wrap this class up. I want you to write down, Lord, give me a praying spirit. Give me a praying spirit. Give me a praying spirit. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Do you see me? You see my eyes? That's all I can say. Give me a praying spirit. praying spirit. This is all to call. This is all to call. Y'all fine. You're fine. This is all to call. Could be the Lord don't want us to sing at this very second. We will in a moment. Maybe the Lord wants this word to resonate. I'm getting ready to close this Bible study. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act pastorally tonight. I'm, we have announcements that we're not going to play. Because the Holy Spirit, I believe, spoke in my ear and he said, I want to receive an offering, we're going to go. He spoke about it and I think he said to me, I want my word to rest with my people tonight. And so whoever had a special announcement done, didn't get made tonight. Don't get mad at me. Get mad to God. Because I believe I'm in the will tonight. He's calling us to armaments. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God. And you and I won't get anything from God if we rest in our flesh. And rest in our action. The only way we'll make progress through prayer and then prayer oh oh you tell us we we shouldn't act he said watch and pray that marries action and prayer together but it's the prayer that directs our vision 
And then when prayer directs our vision, it then directs our steps. The, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You, you can't take right action without prayer. And I say to the church, I wonder who's truly praying. I wonder who's truly praying, who, whose eyes are not blinded. through ugly emotion through who's praying you want prayer tonight I want you to call the prayer line if, if you want if, if you want prayer about prayer call the prayer line if you know I need to pray more and I just want somebody to pray with me right quick because I need a praying spirit. I don't want to be Peter, John, and sitting up with Jesus in the moment of crisis. Not doing what I should be doing. He, he didn't come back and, and, and tell him you ought to be talking. that you ought to be watching and praying with me right now. Call the line. If you need the Holy Ghost tonight, call the line. If you need to be restored tonight, call the line. Baptism of the Holy Spirit comes within this level into speaking in other tongues. Call the line so you can get the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Call the line. You can go down to the name tonight, right where you are. You can be saved. You can be delivered. You can be set free. Sometimes we as saints, we need help. Say the words of that song, praise team. Sooner or later, Oh my.
whatever you think I'm talking about, I am. How about that? And I say what I say, I believe in the Spirit. So if you're in the Spirit, then whatever you think I'm talking about, I'm talking about. I want you to put in the comment line, a hundred of you, you believe, if you still believe God, just write, write in that comment line <laughs> that the Lord can fix anything. Write it down. I like the song. The song, the song itself has, has words of perseverance in it. Sooner or later, it's going to work in my favor. Sooner or later. But it also, it also means I, got, I have to be willing to persevere and wait on you. and I can't fix everything. But I know a God who can fix anything. You and I don't have all the answers, but I know a God who knew the question before it was asked. He's got the answer to every situation. Are you calling that prayer line? Some of y'all need to be saved. Some of y'all need to be saved again. Some of us. Let me say it another way. And some of us need prayer again. Lord, renew my prayer life. Because I, I, I tend to react in crises like the disciples of Jesus' disciples act when, when they were on the cusp of crisis. They they, didn't, they, they weren't vigilant. They weren't alert. They didn't keep praying. Oh, you, you got to hear this. You're not going to like this. They slept in their emotion. They slept in their feeling. They didn't, they didn't watch. God, I wish I could help somebody. They didn't watch. They... Every generation, I'm talking to you, every generation needs to learn how to pray. From my generation on down. And I got to stay here. I was trying not to be here tonight, but I got to do what I believe the Lord told me to do. He told me to tell you to pray. What's wrong with telling you to pray? And then <laughs> prayer will inform everything else. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to speak to this, this generation. This generation this generation likes to move before they hear from God. That's, that's what gets us in trouble. I thought y'all said sooner or later. And see, you, you, you're missing the message tonight because your definition of sooner or later is only you getting your way. my car, my house, or me getting my way in, in a conflict. Let me tell you something. God's will <laughs> is what works in our favor. Say it again. Sooner or later it's gonna sooner or later uh -huh. I got to pray, I got to pray, I got to pray sooner.
COVID-19 coronavirus sooner. Guess what's going to happen? Racism. Racism sooner. I trust you enough to arrange everything. I trust you enough. I trust you enough to wait for the answer, to wait for the disposition. Lord, I ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing till I hear from you. to every situation tonight and I believe God gave me a I pray he did and I believe he did I believe he gave me a one size fits all message tonight Habakkuk said I will stand me in my tower and I will see what the Lord says to me that's what I want you to do that that's the word. Take it home with you. Go read Habakkuk 1. Matter of fact, read the whole book. It ain't that long. But the man of God, when, when there were questions, he could not answer. And even, this is the whole truth, some of the questions had been answered and some of the things that God was allowing, Habakkuk didn't like. But he said, I'll stand me in my tower. Now watch and I wait to hear from God. And I've been taught this as a man of God. I don't know everything. I'm not a scholar like a whole lot of folk, but I know enough not to move until God says move. He said, be still and know that I'm God. The Lord bless you. Did I? Is my spirit sweet tonight? My spirit sweet? Okay. Did you say it's sweet? Right, send some tithing offering. Amen. It's tithing offering at Mount Zion. Tithing offering time. Great apostolic. Time and off. Tithing offering time in the E Church, virtual church. You see how to give? Will you give? Will you tithe tonight? You sow into this ministry. You, you're sowing into a place. We're trying to do the right thing. Want to please the Lord. Get that gift if I have both churches. Look for Mount Zion on East 38th Street in Detroit, Michigan. Make sure it's Mount Zion Apostolic Church on East 38th Street in Indianapolis, rather. In Detroit, look for Great Apostolic Faith Temple on West 4th Street. Give the fire app. Cash app. Get those tags for either church. Dollar sign, the MZAC 4900 for the Indianapolis Church. Dollar sign, Greater EFT for the Detroit Church website for Indianapolis you can give through the website www.mtzionchurch.org www.greateraft.org for Detroit phone number for Indianapolis if you need personal assistance 317-549-1200 extension 136 somebody's waiting to assist you right now you need personal assistance to give by way of the Detroit church 313-460-4100 come on tithe and give Bless the ministry. Daily I will. As you give and tithe, we're getting ready to leave. 
worship thee, Lamb of God. I haven't seen this in a long time. Die for me. What does he do? Who on the inside and Lord while you're healing us on the inside please please stop by and heal our bodies too heal our minds heal our thoughts cover us with your blood protect us from every onslaught from the powers of darkness dismiss us from this place but not from your presence of my heart be acceptable in thy sight oh Lord my strength hey mama and my redeemer in Jesus name amen and amen 
that bless you. Who extend endless mercies.